Hello. Do you have problems with your M600 or SB680 series smart board? I'm going to show you a few things on how to be able to fix this and replace parts. It's quite easy. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it, along with a couple quick tips on how to be able to uh, repair it without taking it off the wall. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. Now, as you can see, this is the smart board M600 series. There is another place you can look. And that would be, most of the times, right on the bottom, as you can, you might be able to see. Let me dis, dis, let me uh, dismount this from the tripod for a moment, so I can show you the where it would be. As you can see, it's right here. Now, that's where you can find out the model serial number, um, along with. A few other little bits of information. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, let's say by let's say by chance this is actually mounted to the wall. Okay. Now let's say this is mounted to the wall. I'm going to show you a couple things how it looks in the back. Now, typically you should do a two-person operation on this, but because it isn't mounted to the wall and we're not going to mount it to the wall, it's not going to be a huge issue. There are four screws, one, two, three, four. So you can see them here, one over there, one down there, and one down there. You're going to need all four of those to be able to mount it to the bracket. Now, most brackets do come where you actually put the screws in, and then you put it in, and it seats. You set it to the right height, and you tighten up those screws. All right. So what we're going to do is I just want to show you a quick tip on how to be able to make a fast change on any of the parts that you may encounter while working on your smart board. Um, some of the issues are, let me unmount this again just so I can be able to um, show you. All right, the M600 series is actually not touch sensitive unlike its previous counterpart. Where this runs is that up in this corner here, you will see a little camera. This is camera zero. Down there is camera one, camera two, and camera three. Now, as we as I take apart the back, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. They can be identified in that sense. A real quick, easy way to be able to replace the camera is to have a stubby screwdriver or a ratcheting screwdriver much like this. Now what it is is that this front piece is where the camera is housed. Okay, so now to be able to fix this without taking it off the wall, it's fairly easy. There are two pieces that you'd want to be able to take off to be able to make a repair on the uh, camera itself. If this is one of the things that you're finding that's not responsive, that's where you would take the, the back piece off. So this takes a standard Phillips screwdriver. If I can get that in there. A stubby screwdriver will most likely help too. Now, like I told you, this is actually there's actually two pieces here that you'd want to remove. The white shield in the front is most likely all you'll need. So let's go ahead and take a look at that part here. The other part you can take off is this gray part, and that takes two screws as well, Phillips. All right. I'm going to zoom in on this. So as you can see, this is the camera. Now, your traditional camera on here uses infrared. I'm gonna grab my tools so I can unseat this. Now, how this is put together is real simple. What you're gonna to need to do is that you gotta be real careful. There is a little black clip. I can get my little thing here. Right here between the blue and this. 
this cable, is, this cable uh, tension or clip is very sensitive. It can break off and fly across the room, thus rendering this, this camera inoperable. So the easiest way to separate this camera is to get a tool. Much like the tweezers or a flathead, a oh, micro flathead. And all it does is it lifts up. Okay? And you just carefully unseat it. Now be very careful with the cable to reseat it. All you do is you just make sure it gets up in there nice and snug. Sometimes it takes a little bit of just patience to get it in. Never rush this, as this is um, a very sensitive piece of equipment here. <laughs> and that's it. It's nice and snug, it's, it's in there good, and this camera should be working. But if we ever need to change out this camera, you're going to need to pop this out carefully, take the cable, set it off to the side, and at that point in time, you're going to need a, um, a, um, let's see. So you can see these are the star-shaped ones. Okay, so very carefully. Now each of these cameras, there's one of each camera. Take that screw and carefully set it off to the side. Be very careful with these uh, cameras as they are very sensitive. So be very careful with them. Set them down delicately. Make sure that you're keeping track of which ones because which one goes on this one only fits on either this one or the one directly opposite which is diagonal of it. So that's it for a moment here until I come back. I will return to show you how or step two. I'll be back. All right, now as you can see, this is the controller here. Um, it's upside down, but what this says is this is actually on the bottom. This has the, the USB port right here, the power supply, along with a light, an LED light, and then the controller that connects up to the um, pen tray. The pen tray sits up top here and it actually shifts off the side before coming unmounted. We're going to go ahead and take this apart and I'm going to show you exactly what you're looking at when you take it apart. It takes a standard Phillips screwdriver, which um, just two screws, 
so as you, what you can see in here is you will see where all the cables to each of the cameras connect. Now, each of them are numbered. Um, camera three, camera two, camera, I can't read them anymore, but these, both of these go to the, this side here, these go to this side here. So as you can see, that's on there. And we're going to need to remove this because I'm salvaging this part here. So then all you need to do is just get a screwdriver that actually has a smaller head. And I've got that right here. And I'm just going to go in. And I'm just going to take it out. It takes two screws, both of them, as you can see, one here and one down here. Actually, let me go over to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. As you can see, up. Yeah, two screws. And then this one here. However, before we completely take it apart, I am going to unmount these cables ever so gently until they flip upwards and the cables come free. Okay. From there, I would highly recommend just popping those back down there so they stay nice and safe. Now what's happening to this um, smart board is, is that um, one of the cameras went out. It was a, due to a, a bad cable uh, and a smart, this was under warranty, so smart sent us out a new one which we mounted last week. So once you have that unmounted, it's free to go. Up next, I'm going to show you how to remove the cables. And it's free. And that's it. See, so as you can see, the, the power, the USB, and then the switch where the tray goes. Try to keep the screws together as you will need them again to re-put on a new one or replace this one. As you can see as well, the different cables that these connect to. Next, we'll be replacing cables. Now as I took apart the um, cameras, uh, I noticed that the part of it, there's a little insert that rides in up in here. But as I remove these, these gray corners, the bottom cameras, the cables, fell out. Um, and this is what sort of sits up here and keeps things a little bit snug. Um, they're, they're supposed to be up in there pretty tight, however, um, they did fall out and the cables did fall off. That's okay. What I did was I coiled them up and instead of running tape around it, I put a piece of paper and then wrapped it up and around that coil to keep them nice. Um, that's this first part here. Second part, what we're going to do is that I'm going to show you how to actually, in case the cables do not come off, what you do is you can actually come along here and just remove. If the cables do become lodged up in this area here, which one of them actually did, but I was fortunate enough to be able to remove um, that uh, cable, fortunately. But if it does become lodged, there is a way to do it. Once I get this off here, I do want to show you where the pen tray does all right, now that I've got the, all the screws off, one of the things about this part here is that this just slides up. Now it does have a little bit of adhesive on there. Now you've got to be real careful because here's that, mag that, that strip that has the um, reflector. So as you can see, here's where the controller goes 
and then underneath you can see these slots that's where the pen tray sits so it basically looks like this and then the pen tray sits right here so real simple uh, um, you always want to make sure that when you do wipe down these reflector strips use a microfiber cloth that allows it to be able to remove any of the extra dust so if you are having problems with it seeing get a microfiber cloth um, and just wipe it down do not use any harsh chemicals um, or any scrub pads use a microfiber cloth and that should do it and uh, the next step I will be removing the side panels to show you how to be able to get the most difficult part um, off this is the most difficult part to remove to be able to get in because the cable actually sits inside all the way to the, the top camera so in return we'll do that next all right here we go this is the bad boy part of uh, the smart board this part here I, I have found the most difficulty so if I break this in the process many parties but this is a learning process and therefore this requires a star head um, screwdriver bit and once you get it in there they are a little bit snug so and they are very long so that's what they do is keep track of those because what they do is they go all the way to the other side to hold that trim piece on now this may come right off because I do have it off the wall this time. Last time I tried to do this, I used a ratcheting screwdriver, which took a very, very long time for me to um, get these, these bits off. So be patient with me. We will uh, be patient with me. We will figure this out. Four, two more to go. Now one thing I did notice about this one here is as we were removing the screw out of this one in the wall, this one is bent. And somehow they must have tightened it too hard and they broke it. So it sat and spent, uh, spun inside this, inside this uh, mounting bracket. So I had to actually get a needle in those pliers to hold it in place while we unscrewed it. So you got to be real careful when mounting these to make sure that you put them on snug, but not too snug. Now, this one happened to have two uh, different types of screws. Metal ones with a spacer, and then the top ones had nylon nuts uh, with, with uh, the spacers already built in. All right, now we've got this, the six screws out. And now we just need to figure out how this baby comes out. I can feel it give, however. I have a feeling it's going to fight with us. Oh, see, I made shift. So that means it's, it's not quite ready to give up. But if it's, if it's like the, here we go. So it basically slides off. Once that's off, we should be able to get in here and take it apart to get this cable out. We'll figure that out next. All right, so I figured it out. So what it is is that you've got these little white clips. So the best thing to do is to get it started. Is to get it started with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver preferably. Once you get it in there, this one typically goes a little bit easier. Okay. I had it out. I should have got it just started and then just left it alone. But I wanted to show how okay, what we're going to do is we're going to move it over to here to the workspace. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to get it started. I just Here we go. Maybe. There we go. So the first one's out. OK. 
Okay, and you work your way over to here. Wow. Let's try the other side here. This might work a little bit better. Goodness, I can hit it. Had it. Ouch. There we go. Maybe not. All right, so what you do is you put your screwdriver in. You try to work it underneath without breaking the tab. Okay. Okay. Okay, so once you get it all fin you know loosened up, it should come apart ever so gently. Now as you can see that this cable is taped down, and all you do is you just peel the tape up and then you just remove the cable, put your new cable on. You know, you can always use new tape if you're, if this tape is pretty worn out. But just make sure you tape it in place because that way it folds it in. Okay, then all you do is you just put your new piece in, tape it down as you go. Make sure you have plenty of space to be able to connect this to the camera. Oops. Make sure you, make sure you have plenty of space to fit this so that you, you can get this into the camera. Once you're done, you put it all back together, which line these up, these little tabs up with, with the end. And then just snap it together and then put it back together. That's it. Um, now these cables are very sensitive. I would be very careful with them as, um, as you can see. Anyways, this concludes the, the video. Uh, as I said that if you do need to save these to carefully just wind them carefully and then just run. I typically run a piece of paper between it so that the tape doesn't stay on it. Um, you can use masking tape, but at least the nice thing about the paper um, in place will hold it without actually marring the ribbon. Again, thanks for watching. I hope this was informational for you on how to replace cameras uh, and other parts of the smart board. Have a great rest of the day.